I feel like doing an old school Macaul- Macaulay Culkin home alone impression because uh, we're going to talk courts and legal cases, but first of all, we need to do a public address. Where is Marjorie Taylor? Where- Jim Jordan. Where's James Comer? Have you seen Marjorie Taylor Greene? They've disappeared. Uh, you know this case they've been just gesticulated and boring everybody non-stop with? Uh, it's got a hole in it, like a bucket with no bottom. The main person that they thought had some stuff on uh, Hunter Biden's hard drive, the Biden family had a yawn, yawn, bore, 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 uh, has been... Well, he's in trouble. He's been... How should we put this? Cuffed. Screwed is the best description, and suddenly Marjorie Taylor Greene and James Comer and Jim Jordan are nowhere to be seen. Individual behind the allegations at the center of Republicans' impeachment inquiry into President Biden, an investigation that is being led by Comer, he's the chair of the House Oversight Committee, was arrested and charged with making it all up. Alexander Smirnov is a former FBI informant, now accused of lying to the FBI and creating false records tied to claims that he made about President Biden and his son Hunter's dealings with the Ukrainian energy company Burisma. For almost a year now, House Republicans have championed these now totally discredited claims from this informant without naming him. Even a trusted FBI informant has alleged a bribe to the Biden family. We already know the president took bribes from Burisma. Today's indictment alleges that the so-called trusted informant's evidence was actually a fabrication. Here tonight, former White House Communications Director Kate Bedingfield and former Senior Advisor to Mitch McConnell, Scott Jennings. Scott, I mean, Republicans have been using this for months, and they have been citing this informant. Senator Chuck Grassley was doing it. Chairman Comer was doing it. Mm. Now they're putting out statements tonight saying that their whole thing wasn't revolved around this. But but there was a lot of pressure on the FBI from conservatives who basically said they weren't doing their job because of this informant. Yeah, if you talk to them tonight, they'll tell you this isn't really uh, all there is to this impeachment inquiry. They're still investigating all the other payments from all the other countries that came into all the other LLCs and all the other members of the Biden family. So they're full speed ahead. I actually did talk to Jamie Comer earlier, fellow Kentuckian. Today? Yeah. Since this came out? Yep. And what did he and say? He told me that his goals here have always been to uh, hold people accountable and make criminal referrals if necessary, and ultimately to uh, perhaps even pass a law regarding influence peddling as it relates to the kinds of things that have been uncovered. He's not sure whether the House is going to do an impeachment or not. He's never has been quite sure whether they're going to go through with it, but he's just trying to find the facts and some accountability. Well, that's quite a shifting of the goalposts from where he's been to, since the beginning of this process, where they've said many times that they aim to impeach President Biden. They've spent months and months and months trying to pull together a case. They've had their very own witnesses. They've had Republican witnesses who have essentially undermined uh, the thrust of the case they were making, even before you get to their kind of star informant uh, now actually going to jail for lying about mm-hmm. Uh, what was at the center of their case. So, you know, I, I think it's a little, it, it's, it's, this is a moment where Republicans are looking at uh, how badly they fumbled the ball here, and they're saying, well, actually, our intention was never to get into the end zone. That's crazy. That's not quite, that's, that's not quite true. Uh, and I think what we've seen time and again is that this has blown back politically on Republicans. We've seen this has been a concerted effort uh, for, as I say, many months, I mean, years, really, uh, to try to make this stick to Joe Biden, to try to make this kind of the center of their case against Joe Biden. It hasn't worked. We see now, uh, again, on the substance, that's uh, because there's no there there. This, this, but this is not the only thing they're looking into. A lot of other money has changed hands here so, uh, from a lot of, of other sources. I... And so to, to wash that all away over one dude who, by the way, was apparently quite a trusted person from the FBI who they paid lots of money to over the years. I mean, to but pin I that on Republicans, guy, I'm not sure is fair. In some of the most sensational claims that we hear about the $5 million payment, that's all from this person who's now got arrested in Las Vegas today when he touched down. Yeah, it's not good. I mean, uh, when, you're, uh, when, when your guy gets arrested like that. But it also doesn't wipe away everything else they have been looking into, which is far more than just this piece, you would have to admit. Lots more has come out. And look, I, I don't know whether they're actually going to get to an impeachment or not, but a lot of information 
has come out here about money that changed hands that has nothing to do with this person. Well, except that it continues to be, they continue to make those allegations and they continue to be undermined. I mean, they've tried time and again to make this argument about this payment from China, which they had, again, throughout the course of this process, they've had their own witnesses come out and say, well, no, it actually, you know, the money actually didn't go from here to there. And they've never been able to make a cohesive case here as they've desperately tried and tried to put it together. So, you know, I, I, again, I think this is, we saw, we saw this throughout 2019 and 2020. They tried to make, Republicans tried to make this uh, an aggressive political case against Joe Biden and Hunter Biden and the Biden family. It didn't work. And at every turn, the substance of what they've tried to put forward falls apart, which you saw in spectacular well, fashion today. And Jamie Raskin is saying that they should call off the inquiry now. Not <laughs> totally sure that'll happen. Kate Petting votes. No, it won't. So do you believe that Comer had any reason to believe that this was all false and ignored it? Oh, that's a great question, Abby. In fact, I'll ask it a different way. When did James Comer know this was false, and how long did he conceal that from the American people? I mean, are you telling me he just found out through the indictment, or has he known all along, or at least for a period of time, that this 1023 form was made up? Those are real questions we need to get to the bottom to. In addition to, you know, Speaker Johnson ending this sham impeachment, he should be looking into that and whether maybe so, James Comer should even stay as chair of the oversight. Do you committee. have any evidence that he knew in advance that this was not a, a legit informant? No, no, look, I don't have any evidence of that. But, you know, Abby, you know what they like to do. Some people are saying perhaps, maybe, ifs, the Bidens. I mean, I don't know what James knows or doesn't know, but he should tell the American people. When did he find out that this 1023 form was a lie? When did he find out that his informant was lying to the American people and they were still using that information? I'd like to know. I think James has to answer that to the American people. All right, Democratic Congress. We've conducted this investigation for over a year. We've been very transparent with the American people. We've been very transparent with the media. We published four substantive bank memorandums that show concerning transactions from our enemies around the world. Uh, we've referenced several uh, hundreds of uh, suspicious activity reports that the banks filed, uh, very concerned about suspicious activity by the Biden family. We've had heard testimony from IRS whistleblowers. Interrogation is what they've been doing today, uh, Fulton County. Uh, Finally, Willis has been in court. I thought she was incredible. Uh, they tried to bring the heat and she just literally swatted them down. Uh, can we ask one question? It is just one question. You press the like button if you think yes. Since uh, the Trumpy Trumps are really into pushing their nose into things that have got nothing to do with them, like uh, uh, who slept with who, etc. Straight question. Just press the like button if it's yes. Uh... Are uh, Donald Trump and Melania Trump going through a few issues? Press the like button for yes. Do you think Donald Trump has ever done anything with Helena Yabba-Dabba-Doo? Press the like button if you say yes. Uh, do you think uh, Helena dabba dabba -Doo and Donald Trump have ever engaged in late night conversations about subjects which are nothing to do with court cases? Press yes if you think uh, they have. Do you think uh, on Valentine's Day, uh, Trump spent more time with Helena yabba dabba -Doo than with his married wife? Press the like button if you think yes. And, uh, oh, it comes down to straightforward uh, romance. Do you think at any stage there's been any romantic thoughts inside Trump's head towards Helena Yabba Dabba Doo? Press the like button if you say yes. We can continue. We can go the full thing. Do you think at any stage that horizontally a uh, former guy and uh, Helena Yabba Dabba Doo have ever engaged in what you would call a horizontal conversation, one on top of the other, depending on what you ever think they choose? Just asking the same type of questions that Trump's clown lawyers uh, attempted to run with funny and uh well screw around and find out is that right alina yabba she did what oh we haven't found out yet if she's been screwing around oh just check it well, i'm not talking about i'm saying romantic relationship doesn't necessarily have to be just sex well, it can I be don't... dating it can be holding hands it can be any of those things that one might call romantic i'm at my next question is based on her opening the door, and therefore I'll just ask it, and Your Honor can decide whether or not it's appropriate. When you went to D.C., did you go to the White House? Okay. I did not go to the White House. No, well, 
Apparently, I'm going to get the answer anyhow. There you have it. Next question. Okay. Correct? Yes. Okay, so I'm asking you in that period, which would be February to April of 2021, until January of 22, did any of your children stay at your house? And you don't have to yell at me. I'm able to understand. I, so I would ask you to not yell at me. That being said, a contract is cash. I didn't give him money in a contract, so that was cute, but I didn't give him money outside, uh, in a contract. What happened is, no, we're going to answer it since you said it. He worked. He worked more hours than he was paid, and the county paid him for the work that he did. So don't be cute with me and then think that you're not going to get an answer. And I will ask you about the contract in a minute. I asked you about cash. Did you ever pay even the aggregate more than $100? All right, Mr. McDill, you can sit down now. I don't believe she answered that question, Your Honor. She answered as to specific individual gifts. And you're not listening to my answer either, so we're done. Very well. Okay. Mr. Rice. Go for the question. When, how did you know to come into the courtroom right then? There were people I was pacing in my office. Okay. And um, I heard someone yell, his testimony is done. Um, it only made sense to me that I would be your next witness. And I've been very anxious to have this conversation with you today. So I ran to the courtroom. So as soon as um, you heard that Mr. Wade was done testifying, that's when you just assumed you would be the next witness? It only makes sense. Um, did you listen to any of the testimony? I've been in my office pacing, ma'am. Okay. Um, did you listen to any of the arguments? I did hear the, the arguments this morning. It's ridiculous to me that the, you lied on Monday, and yet here we still are. And I did listen to that argument. Um, um, all right, so that was it, just the argument, no testimony. Right, I listened to the argument this morning where Adam Abadi, I thought, did an excellent job pointing out how dishonest you were with the court on Monday. And... Um, I'm actually surprised that the hearing continued, but since it did, here I am. Great. Um, so let's talk about... Oh, and since we're doing cross-examination, some other questions to put in there. Marjorie Taylor Greene on Jan 6. Do you think Marjorie Taylor Greene was up to no good on January the 6th? It's a yes or no. Where was Marjorie Taylor Greene on Jan 6? Do you think she was anywhere near the Capitol building? Yes or no? Press the like button now. Uh, Fox... Uh, what's her name? Laura Ingraham thought that she would be smart and bring in a body language. Not sure why. Uh, the body language decided she wasn't playing the Fox News games and just gave the truth about Farney Willis's appearance in court. A strong, confident performance. Ingraham is just clueless, doesn't saying. know how to handle uh, the we're truth. It on the screen, uh, but uh, hopefully she's tossing the papers. What do yeah, we know from okay. that time? So when I see her walk in, she is all confidence. If you watch her, she's walking in with a tight stride and then, interestingly enough, sits down and she does what we would call like a double leg. So she sits down almost in a mannish way where she does this four prong leg move, uh, which displays confidence. So she felt wait, good. Wait, wait, you called it the four? Hold on, Tanya. Tanya, you said the four-pronged leg move. I want to see that. Yeah. What is that? So she looks like she, she crosses her leg to me. I love this, this lingo. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Both legs sit down, then one leg goes dirty, and the other leg crosses over. Like a, a masculine leg movement that you would see a man use when he's wearing pants. You normally wouldn't see this with a woman who's wearing a dress. So that's why it's called it. four-leg prong so when you see Got that it. and then right, here she is she leans back mm -hmm. well tanya funny started she's... waving her finger at one point um toward the judge to make a point yeah. watch this right well, it's highly offensive when someone lies on you and it's highly offensive when they the try judge. to implicate that you slept with somebody the first day you met with them and i take exception to it uh tanya what of that again this is a person who's used to being in front of an audience, so she's very strong when it comes to her nonverbals. She holds eye contact. She does swivel in her chair, but that's more to make sure she's holding eye contact with who's, who she's speaking to at that moment. There's a disconnect that's when you talk about, I'm going to talk to you, but I'm going to look this way. So she has very strong body language when it comes to being direct and forthcoming. I'm no legal expert, but on the day you find yourself in court for saying things that clearly aren't the truth, I, I tend to think if I was finally Willis and I saw this load of BS you put on true social, I would be thinking, oh, 
there's a key. There's a court case waiting to happen for uh, Well, look, this is just straightforward. Uh, it's plain to a base who probably don't understand the law. Trump has one card. It's only the one card. It's plainly victim. Don't think it's going to work. I use Cash App. What is Cash App, for the record? I don't need to know that, for the record. Let's keep going. Well, I believe she answered that question, Your Honor. She answered as to specific individual gifts. And you're not listening to my answer either, so we're done. Very well. Okay. No, I'm not talking about, I'm saying romantic relationship doesn't necessarily have to be just sex. Well, it can I be don't... dating, it can be holding hands, it can be any of those things that one might call romantic. I'm at... Here's the funny thing, to those who consume Fox News in the same way most backsides uh, use toilet roll, uh, maybe the toilet roll has more of a use, they never get to hear the truth. So this is just crazy. Uh, you have Hannity, Clarity and Sanity, and Jesse Waters both said, uh, well, Friday Willis has a nightmare in court, etc., etc. Because what they do, they'll put the lie out again and again and again. Uh, by the time that lie is shown to be a lie, they've moved on to the next subjects because what world are these two clowns living in what do they what is their return by the way for giving such projection such i was going to say bottom licking ring kissing what do they get in return and welcome to hannity and today was an unmitigated disaster for fulton county da bonnie willis now in case you weren't able to watch the hours long hearing what a disaster. Well, we have all these cartoon characters don't have the pedigree to be in the same courtroom as the former president. But remember, this isn't a Fannie and Loverboy scandal. It's a Biden scandal. The Loverboy, Fannie, Alvin Bragg, Jack Smith's team and New York Attorney General Letitia James have all been meeting with Biden's White House counsel, Biden's Justice Department or with Kamala Harris. The Biden White House is overseeing the prosecution of his political rival. But just like everything Biden oversees, it's falling apart. So just to recap, uh, do you think Alina Yabadabadu and former guy are engaging in uh, horizontal conversations? Uh, do you think Marjorie Taylor Greene is particularly really useless? She just pressed the like button. Uh, anybody know where Marjorie Taylor Greene, Jim Jordan and James Comer have disappeared to? And do you think Fanny Willis literally wiped them off the floor with uh, the Trumpy Trump's lawyers? If you think yes to any of those, Press the like button. And uh, since Marjorie Taylor, uh, Jim Jordan and James Cameron have just done one, we're currently missing, who knows why, uh, let's just enjoy that Jamie Raskin moment where he totally sat one Marjorie Taylor green on her backside. And then Hunter, Hunter Biden just literally owned her as well. See you next time and good deal. It is America. sad that my Democrat point of order, colleagues point of order. pretend to care about women's rights while allowing Hunter Biden to exploit women. This is a shame. But let's talk about- Mr. Chairman, there's a, a parliamentary harder. challenge before us. The point Mr. of order. Chairman, point of order. Who's the point? And we'll stop the clock for you, Ms. Green. Mr. Chairman, um, the, our colleague from Georgia has uh, introduced before pornographic exhibits and displayed things that are really not suitable for uh, children who might be watching. And, uh, bathing uh, suits not suitable, Mr. Raskin. Well, but, well, I'm saying I would like the witness to, I would like the member to be instructed to not introduce any pornography today, at least without running it. A the bathing chair suit is not pornography. Well, Mr. we can't Raskin. see it from down there, so you didn't make it available to the minority before you started. Seen it before. It's, okay. it's on an, on the internet. It's everywhere. You and you are submitting a naked woman's body. This is a bathing suit. This is a bathing suit. And it has not been clear before this, this committee. Uh, Glasses on. Do you wear okay. them or not? I have contacts in. Thank oh, you. Oh, congratulations. All right. All right. All right. Chair, ask Ms. Green. Gentlemen, time's expired. Chair, recognize Ms. Green from Georgia for five minutes. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, excuse going? me, Hunter. Oh, apparently, you're afraid of my words. Whoa. Uh, here <laughs> oh. I'd like to reclaim my time, Mr. Chairman. Burst their bubble. Wow, that's too bad. <laughs>